hey, it's me. Oh, wait a second. Oh, there it is. Hey, it's me. T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet. Okay. I'm right here in an undisclosed location. Look, here's the thing. Oh, wait a second. What am I doing? Gotta get something to drink. What am I drinking? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, look. Oh, yeah. This is, they call, <laughs> they call it, Cerveza uh, is a, Cerveza is a Spanish for beer, right? This is Modelo, it says Modelo Negra, right? Well, uh, first of all, let me just say this. When I first started to travel um, alone, whatever, I went to Guatemala. I know I didn't know any Spanish. I didn't know that. I didn't know any Spanish. But there's two words I learned right away, right away, right away. That was cerveza and baño. I let you all figure that out. Anyway, but when I when when I was in Mexico and I had, uh, uh, I guess they, they must be brewed some sort of thing in. Uh, no, they say they're still bottled in. Uh, some some place in uh, in the uh, in uh, my oh in Mexico. So anyway, this is my favorite Mexican beer. But they call it um, uh, cerveza. Uh, um, it's called a scooter. Yeah, I guess a scooter means dark. I'm not sure. Uh, let me get a proper glass for this. Ah, uh, I'll get that open. A beer mug. And as you may or may not know, when I pour my beer, yeah, I like to see the head. It's cool. Don't bother me. See that? I like that. Visual. I like to hear the, hear the ding talk of an audio person. Okay, listen. I just to bring this up. Man, my best friend's in Mexico right now. I forgot where he is. Anyway. And he's, uh, what's, what's he doing? He's a... Uh, He's, he's doing Spanish. He did this course last time I was here. He was away and I was in his place, and and now he's doing uh, he's doing the same course. I did some intensive course. They do it online, then they got to go to Mexico and do something. Da da da. And um, well, anyway, I, I don't know what's going to happen to him. You know, of course. Right? But the point is this: he was telling me because I just got a WhatsApp put back on my phone. You know, and he was telling me. Mexicans ain't taking this thing seriously. This was like at least this was last yesterday, last night. This is what he's telling me last night. Where what, what day is today? I'm recording this on a on a on a Thursday night. Oh man, I need a lime. I need a lime. What's the matter with me? I need a lime. I gotta go find. Damn, I have oh, I've gotta find me a lime. But I'm not gonna drink that. Anyway, um, and he was saying like. They were still holding like soccer matches. There was some big con uh, concert in Mexico City. <laughs> and you know, um, I guess uh, what do you call that? Spring break is still going on and you know, I, wherever they have spring break at down there. I uh, know, Yucatan Peninsula, whatever. And they were talking about spring break down in, in, in Florida, you know, they, they, they closed the bars, everything like that. But the kids are still there on the beach. They paid to get there, and they ain't leaving the beach. They have, they they all in contact with each other, and their whole thing is things like, "Hey, you know, we're not gonna. We're, it's not. You know how attitude young young, young people. Are. I know I'm talking like an old person, but that's what the attitude is. But here's the trick: they don't understand. If you get this thing, it does damage to you. It does damage to like your liver. You know, certain parts of your body. You know. Like this scarification that they'll get there will be for forever, right? I mean, right now I was just at the VA today. One of the things I have a, I had to really take it. it, it, it this is my knee. Oh, you can't see it. My knee there. My left knee. You know, it's a little swollen, but and I, I, I didn't realize it. But they had taken a, a, an X-ray, not an X-ray, MRI, uh, um, some time ago, and there is some tearing, whatever have you. But my whole leg down there, right down. To, I got this thing like um, the, you can't see it. See my heel there. Okay, I'm sorry. See my heel there. But there's this thing where uh, I just t talked to the, to the you know the, the, the foot doctor, podiatrist, whatever it is there, and um, 
I have to give special cushion, not special, but a cushion, more cushion, but I also do some stretching exercises that I have to do constantly. And if that don't work, they're going to do some sort of injection and do something like that. I don't want that, so I'm more diligently do this exercise. And they even, uh, even my shoes that they have that they gave me, you see my shoes? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I'll be right back. No, and look, look at mine. No, look at this. I'll be right back. Don't go to no place. I'm right here. Hold on, hold on. Ah, these are the excellent shoes they gave me. These orthopedic kind of shoes. It's very stylish, don't you think? The reason why it looks so good because I was just on 125th Street the other day, and there's a brother that, well, he did, he's not, he restored, he, he does uh, leather work, right? He's really good. He's on the street, right? And he's, he's, he calls his title, it's Tony, T-O-N-Y. He calls it a title, not a name, because during slavery, they, they would type, what does it matter? Anyway, so he does really good work. But this is, an, but interestingly enough, everybody loves these shoes. So I think it's going to be another, hey, set the pace again. People are going to start getting orthopedic shoes. <laughs> What the big shoes? They're so stylish. And these are the only shoes I have up here because I was only be here for a little while. I left my my hookers down in um down uh, down in um uh, down in South Africa, and so I'm a hope so. Hookers is a is a sneaker brand, right? Uh, you don't know about it yet, don't worry. You go into your Nikes and your New Balances. I had New Balance before, so anyway, but but. but H U K U. It's gonna. It's, it, believe me, it's gonna hit. It's gonna hit. The top of the line is so great. So I left down there. So it's the only ones I have now. Because I'm stuck here. What's going to happen is I think on the 31st, something like that. I have another appointment where they're going to get me another pair of shoes because the VA gives you two pairs of shoes a year. Last year I had to just just one, just this one pair. So they, they might give me two pairs every other day or something like that. But here's what I did. Finally. You see that? I don't know if you saw. Okay, you see that? That's that plastic uh, taps, right? Um, but I put it on uh, later, you know, because I that's when you walk. I walk like that, you know. So when this thing wears down in a couple of weeks, whatever have you, I get new taps put on. And my new shoes, you know, I'll put on maybe the whole full tap. But I'll probably just tap right there, like that. So, oh, also, I'm just wondering what they did this. They also, because of the thing, they gave me these inserts. It's supposed to be some of the best inserts, like that, like that. Now, what's interesting is that that's, that's the VA. Now, if you want to know what socialized medicine, socialism or whatever it is, of Medicare for all, the VA is Medicare for all. Just letting you know. It's socialized medicine. So, uh, you know, I, mean, I, I advocate for, 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 see, a lot of veterans don't want to go to the VA because we, we, we've had bad military experience. We have anything to do with the military like that. But, but if you get into the system, A, you're golden. Anyway, uh, so that's, that's good. I might get two pair. But what happens if I get those two pair basically free, then the, the money that I freed up for that, I can buy the, the hookers, which is like, uh, you know, about 150, 175, 170, whatever, a dollar. So, so it sort of all works out. But remember, this is an American company. The VA supposedly only buys from American companies, so you're actually stimulating the American economy if you... Okay, you understand what I'm trying to say. Let's get back to these people being irresponsible. But this is going to be interesting because there is going to be a backlash. Oh, where's my... Hey, get back over here. Turn back around. This is Ron stuff. My label there. You know you know how in the, in the, in the TV they got the, the, the... You know, they say who... They say who it is, you know what I mean? Well, this is my way of saying who it is. This is my, uh, my, not Clara, you know, the thing like that. Don't move. Okay. So, so, uh, uh, uh what's what I saying? So, you know, all these, like, white supremacists and stuff like that? Oh, man. You know, they're really going to be coming after, you know, they, they, they started with the Chinese, but the Chinese, you know, you don't mess with whatever, or, 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 or Asians, right? Right there. But when they find out, that the Mexicans are being irresponsible. All these Mexicans are delivering stuff like that because they're getting money from that or whatever happened. They're going to be in peril because they basically, they're going to say, people are going to be out at work. They're going to say, I want that job. They'll take it. I want a job as a delivery person for whoever, Amazon, UPS, whatever, the, the local grocery store, whatever, whatever they're doing. Believe me, it's going to happen. Remember when Trump did that thing where he, uh, the ICE raided those, um, that place where we was making the chickens, whatever have you, because they wouldn't, or they wouldn't employ the the black people in that area. Well, just 
you understand where I'm going with this, so I don't want to get any more on that. But but there's going to be just some stuff is going to be happening in the next few. Um, but I would there's something I did come across interesting enough. We're talking about if we're talking about the, the the virus and stuff like that. There's this whole thing. This is where it's so strange to me. I got the first. Thing, I got this from Newark, Newsweek. I think this there's like three different hospitals, something like that. In, uh, in in China, they was reporting certain results because you know as you as you come with the results, they they dig deeper and deeper into into the uh, into the data, right? So one headline, not in Newsweek, but in other place, they said something like um, uh, the blood type that's most at risk or whatever is blood type A. I think positive. And but you know if, when you go to the, the, these three things, like for instance, one 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 hospital reported uh, the the uh, the highest percentage is like O was were thirty three point eight whatever, and and but A was thirty two, uh, B was um, that's round numbers was twenty four, um, um, A B was nine, right? Then another one said A was thirty seven. I'm just giving you round numbers. I'm not going to write there. B was twenty six. O was twenty five. A, B was a, a 10, right? Then another one said that A was 28, uh, B was 25, but O was 38, and B and A, B was 7.32. Now I'm giving these round numbers. I say, so I don't know how those numbers. Plus, you have to understand, I used to be a lab technician. Let me explain this to you. The, the blood types are, you know, those are the major types, A, O, uh, uh, B and AB, right? But then you have positive and negative. So they don't break down with negative, but these are negatives or positive. Plus, in a certain in, in, in certain populations, some some blood type would be more prevalent than other blood types. So I don't know how that would break down. You see how that goes? Plus, your blood type, if you go into the hospital, every time you have a blood transfusion, your blood type, in, a, in, a, in another way, actually change, not the major blood type, but your, your thing sort of changes because you're introducing other blood when you have other blood. It changes, you know, the, uh, um, uh, down an infinitesimal level. It changes your types. We, we all have individual blood types. So I don't know about these surveys. And these things are going to come out and the people are going to start saying, oh, I'm AB. I'm safe. Oh, au contraire, mon Okay. So, so there's a lot of stuff coming out here that I think is like sort of sketchy and you shouldn't really take, take you know, there's a lot of, and this is, these are times, you know, um, uh, but there's things you should do. First of all, I would say, I know the wash. The funny thing is, yeah, you wash your hands. You have to understand. Okay, that's good. No worries, no worries. But you remember in hospitals, right, they wash their hands and they wash their, their you know, how you see the doctors do like this. Put my thing on. Because they know when you sweat, you sweat down and whatever, so those germs come down from your thing like that. It's like, it's like, okay, that's it. But washing the crack of your behind, right? Well, we... When we white when we use toilet paper, let's get back to this toilet paper. It's kind of strange. Somebody once said it's like you ever try to smear, t- try talking to try to clear chocolate off or something. It smears. You know what I mean? A lot of times when when you wipe in your behind, you yeah you why you taking the whatever the fecal matter away, but you, it's something. Like, so when you sweat down, you know you sweat from your back where right down into the crack. You actually you know that's how you get those those with track marks in your in your in your tidy whities or whatever have it. So. The thing is that the, the, the that French thing with the the, the, the B word, the bouets or with the bonnets or whatever that thing is, you know, where, where the, we put the water there. Uh, if, uh, that's actually best for you because the water will wipe your whole, you know, was clean out the whole thing. Also, um, you have to understand what I usually do um, when I'm wiping my behind, right? From near a sink, whatever, you might even have a thing. I, I dip the, the toilet paper in. So when I wipe it, right, but I dip the toilet paper in some water and then I wipe again, you you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I know in South Africa, you know, if they were, let me put it this way. If you're in the woods, which I was one time, in the jungle, actually, which I was one time, you ain't got no toilet paper. You used to use a leaf. Hopefully the leaf is not whatever have you. You, just, you use a leaf. You know what I mean? Dude, especially in the extreme, you use a leaf, you know, whatever have you. You will find something to use. You use your hands if you have to. Anyway, my point really is that the human beings will find a way. Um, uh, uh, but let me go back to you talk to the elders and it's just interesting because this I think this crisis is going to be a situation where you bring certain people together that you for good or bad or indifferent right the uh, elders really got to start young, young, young people really got to start li- not listening to li- hearing what the elders are saying they can make up their own minds because a lot of times um, 
you know, the answer is with the elders. Like it's been a hundred years since the since the Spanish flu, hundred and two years or whatever it is, hundred four years since the Spanish flu pandemic. Well, I heard this. I didn't see it. I mean, it was, but you know, um, black people, you know, black grandmas, they had a cure. They had something to do, and people know. And it's some some generation removed. So I would, you know, we, there, there are ways around this or out of this, whatever it is. Last thing, just want to say, I just looked up because I'm always kind. I just it's just like a game to me. The exchange rate between the dollar and the rand, because I'm interested in South South Africa, the rand. Let me put this: when I came here, when I, less than a month, about a month ago, when did I get here? Less than a month ago, the, the exchange rate was something like. You know, one dollar equals, let's say, um, fourteen point five rand, right? Right now, less than three weeks, the one dollar equals seventeen point four seven rand. That's a huge Trump. That's amazing. No. Um, Call her back. So that's amazing. That's unbelievable. Something's happened with the economy. You better beware. Uh, This thing is is really going to fall apart. So let me let me let me leave you now, so I can uh, talk to my sister. Of course, she's probably talking about my blood tests and stuff like that. Uh, But we're, as Max Kaiser would say, we're going into a neo feudal state. Um, just beware. Be, be, take care. You know, t- take a hot bath tonight so you can go to sleep. Really, go to sleep. Blah 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 blah. Get plenty of rest. Uh, 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 eat well. Blah 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 blah. Talk to you later. <laughs>